So we're starting Intro to Geospatial Technology. Welcome. If you missed class today, no big deal. I'm going to go over everything that we did in class in this recording here. I still haven't figured out how to do live screen recordings with my very slow laptop when the podium isn't working. So I'm going to try to figure that out in the coming weeks, but I will always recap things in a video for you. Today, we are going to review the course syllabus and academic expectations. We'll talk through course objectives and the structure of the course. I will walk you through how to submit assignments in Blackboard, as well as how the course is structured in Blackboard. And I'll introduce myself to the class. And if you want to write me an email introducing yourself to me, that would be awesome. So I'm Amanda Susie. I go by she, her pronouns. My email is asusie at fitchburgstate.edu. And I will show you on Blackboard where to access that also. My office is in the science complex, room 131. Uh, my office hours are by appointment only on Thursdays from 11 to two. However, I am um, available pretty much anytime via email. So please, 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 please reach out to me. So let me tell you a little bit about me. I'm Amanda. I started at Pittsburgh State this year. I've kind of had a strange circuitous path. I graduated high school in 2002, and I went straight on to college to UMass Dartmouth, and I loved it. I was having a great time, but then my parents wouldn't co-sign student loans for me for my second year, so I had to leave. I really, I couldn't afford to put myself through it, nor were there methods at that point that were accessible for me to, um, Anyways, I just couldn't figure it out how to stay. So I took a pause on my academic career and I um, did a lot of life stuff. I had kids, three of them. I have owned multiple businesses. I was a web developer, a graphic designer. I have a clothing line. Um, I did a lot of things. So 10 years later, I went back to school at a local community college. For those of you who are around here, the MAU. Um, I actually tested out of a lot of the uh, introductory courses like English 101 using the CLEP tests. You might not know about those, but it's a way to test out of classes and get credit for them. It's kind of like an AP exam, except it's only an hour long. It's computerized and it's, I felt that it was fairly easy. Some of them, you have to study harder than others. So at the Mount, I got my associate's degree in liberal arts and sciences with Commonwealth Honors. And as part of that honors program, I got to present at a research conference. And that, and I'll put the poster up so you can see it. This is my research project from then. Um, and through that research conference, I got bitten by the bug that is academia. I love teaching, I love research, and I love presenting. So from there, I completed my bachelor's in environmental science at Fitchburg State University. I got to present again on wetland ecology. And this was really fun because I got to go out most like a lot <laughs> during a semester and sample the wetlands. Um, and look at the habitat. Uh, we looked at the hydrology, the soil, the animals, the vegetation, and it was awesome. I, I super loved that course, and my advisor taught that course. She was really good. She really pushed me to publish my paper, paper from it and to present at another local conference. Um, so I don't know if you know, but presenting posters and getting papers published as an undergrad is, not common. 
Um, so it was really cool that she pushed me to do that. And I'm really thankful for that. So if any of you are interested in uh, taking some data and publishing it, I'm definitely willing to help you. Um, I also got to go out and measure the diameter of, I think it was something like 1,200 trees to come up with um, storage, carbon storage by forest type. And that was my senior thesis, which I also published. Um, it's actually coming out in Northeastern Geographer next year. Um, so if you see these little black dots here on the map, those were the sample sites. So I had one site that was in coniferous forest. So I'll use that as an example. Coniferous forest, it didn't have that many trees. If you can think of like an open white pine forest, that's what it looks like. So I measured probably 15 trees in that plot. And then I calculated out the carbon using math and um, analyzed it to see if there were differences by forest type for um, the plots. And I also extrapolated it based on the area of the forest on campus. So I had to um, use aerial photography to determine which was coniferous forest and which was deciduous forest, um, which you can tell if you look at um, rem uh, satellite photos from the fall, because you'll see areas where the leaves are off and leaves are on, and then um, you can tell the difference. So Franklin Pierce University is where I took my first GIS class and I fell in love with it. So after Fitchburg State, I went to UMass Amherst. That's where I got my master's in GIST. And my research there spe specialized in spatial analysis. I did things like wetland change detection in remote sensing. I did things like uh, bioclimatic analysis of North American river lobster. No, North American lobster, <laughs> sorry. I also um, did things about the North American river otter, which I was thinking of. And that's what I'm working on for my dissertation now. So now I am a researcher in the environmental conservation department at UMass studying spatial ecology and North American river otters, um, which this map is a habitat suitability map of Massachusetts. And clearly the cities are less suitable for habitat because they live in wetlands and they um, need some forest cover. So you do see otters in Boston, which is incredible, but it's not the best place for them to live. Um, I have also had my maps published in the Cryosphere, which is a fairly large journal. Um, this was somebody else's research that I did the maps for. And I have done some analysis on my, the effectiveness of my teaching. So when I taught geospatial technology last fall at UMass Amherst, I did a pre and post survey to see how students' attitudes changed. So unfortunately, a lot of them did not want to continue on to learn more GIS. However, they felt like their skills improved and they could um, speak to the relevance of GIS in their future careers, which is cool. Currently, I am teaching two classes at UMass Amherst, analysis of environmental data, and also geospatial information science, along with teaching geospatial fundamentals here. Uh, you guys call it introduction to geospatial technology. Yep. <laughs> I call it geospatial fundamentals when I teach it. Same concept. Um, in addition to all of my teaching and my research, I'm mentoring an undergrad who is doing multi-scale spatial analysis of land cover land change in bumblebee habitats in Massachusetts. And just like my advisor, when I was an undergrad, I really want to push her to publish 
her results from that from the literature review and the spatial analysis she's doing. So I'm really excited to start that. You'll notice that all of my classes, if you take them, carry two distinct signatures. One is ample opportunity for hands-on work, and two, a wide spectrum of example ap showing applications of technology. Normally, this would be the time I would ask if you have any questions. But since this is asynchronous, you can email me questions at the end. Let me talk a little bit about resources on campus. So first is diversity. Everybody comes with different perspectives and values, and these differences make a robust discussion about certain topics. I value all of these perspectives, and I ask that you keep the discussion respectful. If something is hard for you to talk about, there's no pressure for you to share personal details. In any event, feel free to talk to me about this or other faculty who will be happy to help you navigate. Additionally, like most academic fields in 2020, the GIS field is currently in a period of transformation as scholars uncover and battle systematic racism that is embedded in this construct of history. I pledge to continue my research in diversity, equity, and inclusion, to find ways to incorporate more diverse voices and perspectives, and to contribute to a reconsideration of this concept. As for disabilities, there is, I wanna support you for success. So there is the Di Disability Services Department um, office here to support you if you have a physical, psychological, or learning disability. You can contact their office if you think they can support you. Everyone learns through different processes and we really want to help you succeed. As for the academic community, there are lots of people actively studying and thinking about GIS. There's online forums, there's lots of books, and lots of journal articles that researchers have published. I encourage you to engage in the community, talk to others, read things, use the ideas of others. That's what scholars do. However, it is super important to credit the ideas of others. When you talk about or write about someone else's ideas, you give them credit. If you want more details on that, you can read the academic honesty path policy. And so for technology use, during class you might have to look, we're going to be using computers. Um, just keep it respectful. And lastly, in this section, the golden rule of studying. So the general theory behind credits is that for every contact hour in class, you will spend two to three hours outside of class studying. I have structured the activities to take less time than that. If you're spending more than six hours on this course, let me know and we could talk about streamlining your preparation time. Many students are going to spend less time than six hours outside of class, and that's okay. You'll have readings, videos, a quiz, and a lab to do every week. And that brings me to grading. This 10% attendance and participation, while I would love to everybody to come to every class, that is absolutely um, ridiculous for me to assume during the pandemic. I will be very, very lenient about attendance. Please email me if you have to miss class, and I'll talk more about that when I go deeper into the attendance page. 45% of your grade is lab assignments. That is the most important thing to submit. Now I'll go over those more too. 
27% are reading quizzes, and those are open book, so you should do well on those. It's automatic points. And 18% is either a term project or a take home final, which I'll get to. Late work, I would like you to submit work by the deadline. It makes it easier for me to grade. It makes it less stressful for you so you don't have to play catch up. However, um, I will not penalize late work this semester. So um, you will not have this 10% reduction. I have left it in here uh, just because I use these slides every year and eventually I will get back to that. But because of the pandemic, I know things are a little crazy. Um, so do your best. Stay in contact with me, email me what's going on. So if there's um, something that you need to take time on, you can do that. Yeah. All right, so let's get deeper into these different activity types. Uh, as I said, attendance is not mandatory. I will post everything online so that you can do it at home if you want to. Um, I am not going to take off points for attendance. So this is like an automatic 10 points on your grade. But please notify me if you're going to be late or you're going to be absent. And I told students in the class that they wake up late because it is an 8 a.m. class. If you wake up late and you're like, oh, it's 8.30, I might as well not even go, forget that, come anyways. You will still get something out of it, even if it's just face-to-face -face time where I can help you with your labs. So speaking of the labs, we are going to do about 15 set of lab assignments, depending on the pace of the class. Now, 15, there's only 13 weeks of class. So 15 is a lofty goal. I do not expect to get through all of them. However, we're gonna try. Um, and I will post what we don't get to at the end of the course. So you can do them on your own time if you wish. So you're probably not gonna be able to finish every lab assignment during class. That means that you can do it for homework. It should not take you longer than two hours to do lab work for homework. So next week's structure, I expect everybody to do the course readings by Tuesday. Tuesday in class, we will talk about the readings. I can answer any questions. Anything that you found confusing, we'll talk about. And then we'll start lab one in class. We'll have probably at least half of class one, uh, Tuesday's class to do lab one, and then all of Thursday to finish lab one. If you finish early, you can go and excuse yourself from class or help others that are in class. Um, if you do not finish by the end of Thursday, then you have to do it on your own time because the next week we'll be starting on the next lab. So talking about those reading assignments, there's gonna be a reading assignment every week and a quiz every week. If you can finish that, let's see, I said the sixth and that is Sunday night. I put the deadline as Sunday night. Um, I would like it done before class on Tuesday so that we can talk about it. If there's something in the quiz that every single person is getting wrong, then I know that's something that I need to go over that you didn't absorb from the reading. So please do it by Tuesday morning and I will adjust the um, deadline on Blackboard for that. Finally, we're gonna have a term project or a final exam. It seems like most of the people in the class wanted to have the take home exam. It's gonna be multiple choice, not short essay. Look at this. Multiple choice questions um, that I'm gonna pull from previous quizzes because it's easier for me and it makes it uh, nice for you. Alternatively, you can choose to do a term project and present during finals. I prefer presenting. I get super bad test anxiety, so I would do the presentation. I know I would kill the presentation, but a lot of people are fine doing take-home exams. 
who am I to judge? I will give you an option. So as I said, week one, it's all about, it's just fishing world out there. You're gonna watch the videos, read the readings, take the weekly quiz, and then we'll do the lab assignment in class. So now that you have seen that lecture, let me go over how to use Blackboard. Actually, I am going to make a separate video that tells you how to go over uh, how to use the Blackboard site. So thank you so much for watching this very long video. It should be a good introduction to your course requirements and send me your introduction. I want to get to know you.